Hello everyone. Uh, I hope you are doing well in this hard time of the pandemic. Uh, today I'll be speaking about uh, fog computing. Uh, so the title of this presentation is an introduction to fog computing. But before we begin, I would like to thank uh, my dear friend and senior, Mr. Uh, Iptisam. And uh, I would also like to mention that uh, my father is, a, is an alumni of uh, Jorhat Engineering College. And uh, he passed out in the year of 1979, I guess, uh, from the Department of Civil Engineering. And uh, again, I would like to thank Hittisam Da for uh, giving me this wonderful opportunity to speak with you guys. So, uh, uh, my name is Pallav Kumar Dev, and I am a PhD research scholar at uh, Indian Institute of Technology, Kharagpur. I work at Swan Lab, a uh, smart wireless applications and networking lab. And I am also wor working part time, like I, uh, we have a startup company, uh, Sensor Drops Networks, which is, which is uh, owned by my supervisor and uh, two of my seniors. And uh, I am working as a project head over there. Like, so uh, the link is in this slide. Uh, feel free to go through. So uh, uh, this is my group. Uh, the one uh, sitting at the center is my supervisor. And if you notice a guy in yellow shirt, he is Mr. Uh, currently Dr. Uh, Anandrup Mukherjee. So he is my mentor. And uh, these are my research interests. I work in uh, Internet of Things, specifically fog computing. Uh, so uh, my work mostly entails uh, computation offloading, resource management in uh, fog computing. Uh, I also work in unmanned aerial vehicles. Those are drones and how they coordinate among each other. Uh, Recently, I have also published a paper in eHealth where we have developed a smart digital stethoscope, which is uh, uh, in a way smart in itself as it uh, identifies the number of heartbeats and uh, stuff. But uh, it is also uh, network aware, like based on traffic, it um, transmits data uh, in an IoT environment. I also work in terahertz communications. Now, if you, uh, you might be aware of all of the new technologies, all the new generations that are coming up after 4G. So we have now 5G, 6G. People are also proposing techniques for 7G. Uh, then I'm also working in nano networks and uh, machine learning. So uh, it may be noted that I, I do not contribute to machine learning, but I use machine learning for my uh, training my applications. So this is about me and my research interests. And uh, overall, my entire group works in IoT and networking and its applications. So let us start. Uh, so uh, before we get into what, uh, what exactly fog computing is, uh, it's very important to know what is cloud computing. So cloud computing is a on -demand, uh, it's, it's an on-demand service of applications and resources for the users. And uh, uh, basically, it's like without any active participation from the users, you can get access to resources, uh, remote resources for, that belong to other third parties actually. So this is a remote access of applications and data and it is device independent. Like anyone can go for the cloud computing services, anyone can opt for it. And uh, these services are virtualized at the cloud level and uh, they provide scalable computing services. So basically it's according to your need, like how much do you want, how much should be allotted to you, uh, and uh, how they are going to coordinate for the different uh, users and the requests. And uh, the, the final advantage is like to, with using cloud computing, you can reduce the uh, required capital and maintenance of overheads basically. So you do not need to maintain these things. You do not need to uh, buy servers, you do not need to buy high configuration devices, you can just rent it. So uh, this is basically an overview of cloud computing. With the cloud computing, there are three basic services or cloud computing services. These are the software as a service, SaaS, then platform as a service, PaaS, and infrastructure as a service, ES. So the software as a service is basically for for availing applications directly. This is for this is basically the uh, web-driven delivery of services, and it utilizes the internet to deliver these kind of services. So examples are Google, Gmail, Docs, and Sheets. Then you have platform. Then we have platform as a service. Platform as a service is basically for the developers. The, the, it's used by developers to develop applications for their software. 
and uh, the uh, the vendors or the service providers basically just give you the platform for uh, for developing whatever you want to develop and uh, then we have the infrastructure as a service infrastructure is, is a service is basically a self service kind of model where they'll only give you the resources like if you're looking for storage you get data centers if you get if you're looking for computation you get gpus so those kind of uh, services so basically the vendors they outsource storage servers data center space and cloud comp and cloud networking so it gives you an illusion of uh, on premise infrastructure and uh, given the features and given the nature of these services so you can um, uh, we, 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 you can call software as a service you can you directly use it as you look at the diagram here so sas you directly use it pass you use it to build stuff and ias is uh, basically moving by moving it means to say you're not moving the cloud uh, computing service you're uh, you're moving in yourself like you can move from one location to another and you can still access whatever you had done beforehand so it's a centralized kind of thing so these are the three services so this is a basic architecture or the network architecture of cloud computing in the last layer if you follow my pointer this is the last layer where you have the user device layer so here all of the users in iot it can be anything like these are cell phones these are uh, people these are uh, very smart variables vehicles then uh, cctv cameras those kind of anything ubiquitous devices so you uh, from this layer at the user layer you send the data through a gateway now a cloud server may be situated anywhere like you might be sitting in india it might be in some other country it might be in different district it can be in a different city altogether so basically it needs to hop through networks it hops through networks and reaches the designated servers so in this diagram i have not divided the networks but you uh, to get an idea from the user layer you connect to the gateway from the gateway it, you need you need to cover through routers you need to cover through bridges hubs switches everything you hop to the cloud there you uh, there you perform the operations what what is required by the user and then uh, the result is returned back now while returning back also if you follow the green line this is just a uh, abstraction of it but it needs to follow a similar fashion how it went so basically you need to follow a similar path to return the result the way you have sent the data to the cloud now this or uh, now this operation this architecture basically gives you computation power high computation power but uh, the distance is very high like the number of hops is very high now as you hop from one device to another if you are aware of the seven layers of the osi the packet headers need to be broken down in each step you are breaking down headers you are again creating headers to send off to a different uh, network or a different device so there you need you have got transmission time you have got propagation time and plus you have got the execution time among all of the three uh, among all of these three uh, additional times that is required for getting the results only the execution time is extremely fast the transmission and propagation time adds a huge amount of delay which is why uh, the whole uh, the whole basic idea for showing you this architecture is to motivate the uh, concept of fog computing so since we have a lot of time for transmission and propagation we have to uh, devote a lot of time for that hence to reduce this we come to fog computing what fog computing is is basically a layer between the user device and the cloud or the user layer in the cloud here the fog computing uh, devices basically perform the operations instead of the cloud so basically if you see the red uh, hops this was in case of the cloud computing but in fog you directly send to the gateway or to any other device through uh, basically radio access networks or wifi zigbee whichever okay let me remove this uh, yeah you can see this yes so here uh, you only need to perform the operations at the fog layer that is the devices that are present at the edge of the network and uh, through that you are reducing the time for propagation as well as for the transmission like uh, you are dropping down the need for the multiple hops and 
the fog devices are basically resource constrained in terms of uh, if you compare it with the cloud uh, devices but uh, due to the, uh, the reduction in time for tra uh, traveling or the distance travel so you are reducing the time delay now the fog computing layer devices as i mentioned they i have they have compared compared to the cloud they have less number of uh, configuration their configuration is low basically so due to which the storage capacity of the fog devices are very low so to store data we again have to rely on the cloud so you have multiple hops as i mentioned here multiple hops to store the data for non time sensitive operations if there is a time sensitive data you first perform the operations at the fog layer itself and then you send it off to the cloud for storage because there is always a need for historical analysis or predictive analysis for those kind of things you need data so those data we fetch from the cloud later on so let us dive into fog computing a little more but before that there might be a confusion between what is fog computing and what is edge computing and what is the difference between them so basically fog layer and the user layer in between them there is another layer which is called the edge layer now if you look at this diagram i have added a yellow layer which is the edge layer the edge layer communicates directly with the user layer and it if necessary it sends the data to the uh, fog layer and then to the internet so uh, the edge layer is basically connected directly to the users and it is application specific like if you are a user and you have a set of sensor nodes and you need to collect data and you need to perform operations locally so that is that is where you use the edge layer and you, and edge layer the devices uh, in most of the definitions you will find that the edge layer is basically for a private network whereas the fog layer is for a public network uh, a much wider area but the edge layer is as i mentioned uh, private a smaller personal area network pan so uh, going into the differences of difference between the fog and the edge computing both of these uh, paradigms bring the data and intelligence at the edge of the network but the edge computing is limited to uh, only embedded systems and close to uh, the data sources and uh, the, as i mentioned the edge computing does not transmit the data to the network only if it is necessary only if you wish to send off the net data to the cloud for storage or any other purpose you can do it but generally the edge computing devices do not transmit data to the network again the definitions vary the uh, from block to block from paper to paper the definitions vary but these are the uh, these are the basic differences okay now both edge and fog computing they both provide the results in real time but sometimes in definitions of fog computing you might find the term near real time so again this is just a difference in uh, terminologies but then again both of them provide the results in real time not all architectures need edge computing not all architectures can afford edge computing so they need to rely on the fog computing paradigms or the platforms so and uh, uh, coming to the one fourth fifth point the fog computing operates on the lan level for generalized applications so basically this is not working in a private network it is working in a public network and it needs the fog computing devices need to uh need to provide uh, services for everyone not just for the owners and uh, fog computing provides the results in near real time a difference in terminology but both of them are expected to provide services in real time time sensitive applications this is a general definition of fog computing this is given by cisco now uh, uh, cisco and there is a paper by bonomi so these are the two people who had actually come up with fog computing now i'll read out the definition for you the fog the fog extends the cloud to be closer to the things that produce and act on iot data these devices called fog nodes can be deployed anywhere with a network connection on a factory floor on top of a power pole alongside a, a railway track in a vehicle or in an oil rig any device with computing storage and network connectivity can be a fog node examples include industrial controllers uh, switches routers 
embedded disk services and video surveillance cameras. Uh, the basic, the important points to take from this is that the fog is basically an extension of the cloud. It is the main idea behind proposing fog computing is to uh, is to reduce the latency, is to reduce the time required to get a task done. And uh, towards that, they are uh, executing or uh, pro are processing on the data uh, closer to the devices that are producing the data. So this is it. So basically, if you look about it, this is a uh, the fog computing basically performs operations closer to the sensors, closer to the sensor nodes. So these devices have, have uh, a computing power, storage power, and network connectivity. Remember that these are not unlimited. These are not infinite computation power or storage. These are still low. These are still low computation devices, still low uh, amount of storage and network connectivity is again basic. So examples of the fog nodes include controllers, switches, routers, embedded servers, cameras. So you, perf you start performing operations on these devices. Like these devices, for example, if you take a router, the work of the router is basically to route or uh, basically select the path through which a packet is supposed to go. That is the work of a, that is the main feature of a router. But with fog computing, these are specialized and these are uh, these are specialized in a way that they are they need to perform operations. For example, if you send a video data, you need to identify. Uh, suppose you are working in face recognition or you are working with. Uh, uh, identification of vehicles or cars in video surveillance, whatever we do. So these operations, image processing, video processing, then inferences from machine learning models, these are now performed at these uh, network devices like routers. So now this is the basic definition that was given by Cisco. But if you look at papers uh, uh, from different authors or from different companies also, these are not limited to uh, these resource constrained fog nodes. Fog nodes have multiple definitions. Fog nodes can also be high servers, the, like devices that are uh, analogous to cloud servers. They can also act as fog nodes. The only difference is that they are present at the edge of the network. They are present closer to the devices that are producing the data. I'm repeating this again. The, the devices are present closer to the sensor nodes where they actually generate the data get the processing done near those devices and then send back the result. Now, a very, very important point, fog computing is not designed to replace the cloud. It is designed to complement the cloud. Uh, let me simplify or clarify. Fog computing is supposed to assist the cloud in performing or uh, presenting results much faster. So, in the user devices layer, the user devices offload the data to a nearest fog node. Now, connection to a fog node can be through any radio access network, anything. Like it can be a Zigbee, it can be Bluetooth, it can be a six low pan, it can be WiMAX, it can be anything, uh, cellular network, anything. So this is the, uh, it selects the nearest fog node. And as I mentioned earlier, these fog nodes have uh, like they are resource constrained in terms of their storage uh, computation power comparatively to the cloud. So they need assistance from the other fog nodes also. So then comes the concept of load balancing or if there is a less time sensitive operation that needs to be performed, not need to do it in the same fog node itself. We can pass it through the other peer fog nodes and uh, get the work done. So this is load balancing and uh, so you perform the results in the, sorry, the, you perform the operations in the fog layer and you pass on the results to the user devices. Uh, but if there is a, uh, this data need to be stored for historical analysis and these data need storage, then the offloading to the cloud, then we offload it to the cloud. Then there is another version of it that the user devices, when there is a non-sensitive data, it can directly send off to the cloud. There is no need of burdening the fog nodes with it. So this diagram makes it clear that the fog computing paradigm that was proposed by Cisco as well as by Bonomi, these, uh, this was never to, uh, never to replace the cloud. This is for assisting the cloud 
for getting like real time sensitive operations for getting the work done in minimum delay with minimum delay so now the data does not need to travel the data does not need to go all the way to the cloud and come back now the data is close to us is closer to the sensor nodes hence faster results so the, uh, these are the advantages again let me move this so that you can see it properly yeah so these are some of the advantages of fog computing mine uh, it may be noted that uh, these are not the only advantages there are multiple advantages that researchers are uh, unfolding every day so uh, the most uh, in the most basic level these are the advantages we have minimized latency as i uh, mentioned earlier the data does not need to travel all the way like end to end from the user to the cloud so there is a bandwidth conservation also you know, we are conserving the data uh, uh, sorry the we are conserving the uh, bandwidth so we do only need to use the network for traveling maybe just a few hops not up to the cloud but only a few hops few hops also only when there is not like uh, we are load balancing among the other fog nodes if we are not then we are we only need to stick to one hop so this is a uh, bandwidth conservation then enhanced security enhanced security because again you are not traveling from one network to the other there is uh, you only need to uh, you only need to stay within a local area network so uh, the data transfer the data traveling also becomes low which enhances the security then reliable operations specially aware data again this is analogous to what i said to, in case of enhanced security the data does not need to travel far also if you uh, look into it you do not need to work on data which is uh, suppose far away from you so the fog nodes only are only aware of the local area network and then finally optimized movement of data so the, all of these points are actually interrelated so these are all interrelated due to low like the need for less amount of data traveling we have the minimum latency bandwidth, bandwidth conservation enhanced security reliable operations spatially aware data and optimized movement of data so let us just uh, expand on this why minimize latency i have been mentioning this for quite some time now the same reason again these are these help in performing time sensitive operations and the operations are now performed closer to the sensor data like to the sensor nodes so these are uh, these need reduced transmission time and the trade off between the execution time and the fog of the execution speed of the cloud and at the fog exists let me repeat i uh, may have stammered there so the trade off between the execution speed of cloud and fog is always there because as i mentioned in the cloud we have got servers and we have got high configuration devices but in case of fog nodes these are basically switches which are switches routers or networking devices which are converted to work for to work as a cloud an illusion of the cloud so uh, this is again given by cisco uh, it analyzes the cloud it analyzes the data closer to the device where the the data is collected and uh, there is a, the it makes a difference in averting disaster and cascading system failure like we have reduced latency now you can we can take uh, we can take actions in a very fast manner in very real time much much faster so then the bandwidth conservation now iot devices as um, as the days passing as the years are passing by the number of devices are increasing now each of us are using multiple uh, devices that connect to the internet we have a phone we have a smartwatch we have smart wearables uh, everything refrigerators your home uh, everything needs to connect to the cloud or sorry to the internet so iot devices are generating a huge amount of data the number is also increasing and the number of devices is increasing so the number of uh, data or the request for data transmission is also increasing so it is not practical to send everything to the cloud so not all applications need cloud level processing right so uh, so with the fog computing you can deal with we can deal with such issues 
Now, sending all of the data to the cloud also creates the possibility of bottlenecks. Uh, if you're not aware of what is bottleneck, the diagram below the left one is an example of a bottleneck. So all of the data coming in together, all of the data, all of the requests are coming in together. The bandwidth gets limited. There is packet drops, there is rejection, or there is a queuing delays. So basically, the creation of bottlenecks causes uh, denial of services. I'm not talking about the denial of service as a security threat, denial of services due to packet drops and those kind of issues. So uh, in the cloud computing, because of the centralized architecture, there is the uh, possibility of single point failures as well as, as I mentioned, bottleneck. But if you look at the diagram up to the right, which is a fog layer, each of the devices can connect to different computing device. Now, uh, you can call it a fog node, you can call it a computing device now, or you can call it a network device now. In the fog computing paradigm, these terms are becoming interchangeable. So all of these devices can connect to any of the device. So there is a reduced possibility of bottleneck. And also there is the reduced possibility of single point of failure. Suppose if this device goes down, this cell phone can connect to any other fog node that is within its vicinity. Everyone is performing operations for us. So there is a distributed connection to fog nodes when it comes to the fog computing. Then enhanced security. Uh, the enhanced security, as I said, these are all interrelated. The data travels from multiple networks to reach the cloud, which is, uh, which is threatening. And especially the data needs to travel long distances in fog computing, uh, sorry, in cloud computing kind of uh, architectures. But in fog, it allows local processing. The data does not need to travel far and it remains closer to data generating sensor nodes and uh, which uh, basically reduce the possibility of attacks and uh, it is limited to the local area LAN. It is uh, limited to the local area networks. If you notice all of these points are again mentioned earlier because of these features all of these advantages are coming up for the fog computing paradigm. So uh, keep in mind all of these features. These features give you the advantages. So after the enhanced security, this is a diagram which uh, I created to give you an idea. Like the cloud is a centralized architecture. It's a centralized place and the red ones are the users. These users send off the data to the cloud in a centralized way. So there is a possibility of bottlenecks as I mentioned. The data needs to travel far. Again, whatever uh, features I had said. Now, uh, when it comes to fog computing, these data are localized to the fog layer. So these data becomes geospatially localized. So they do not need to travel long distances if the storage or uh, further historical analysis are not required. You perform these operations only in the fog layer, you, within this area itself, or this area for this user, or this area, or this area. So it does not need to go to the cloud anymore. So you are limiting the uh, limiting the information, valuable information uh, to a localized area. You're not sending it globally. Now, these are the other advantages. We have already covered this flow chart. So this is again to give you uh, the idea that the fog computing is not here to complement, sorry, is not here to replace the cloud. It is here to complement the cloud services, to help the cloud basically. So hence we have reliable operations, specially aware data, optimized movement of data, reduced load from the cloud, and there is the support for mobility. Soft handoffs, hard handoffs. So these kind of, uh, 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 these kind of uh, approaches help in uh, supporting mobility. Like you're moving from one network to the other. You do not need the cloud to again maintain where you are, or he does not need to maintain the uh, tracking of the users. So the fog nodes from, if you are connecting from one network to the other, the fog nodes nearby can easily serve. And secondly, handoff information from one uh, fog network to the other fog network is easy, is simpler. Uh, if you go through papers or different kind of applications, so there is also the term called fogging. Fogging is basically this, like how do you coordinate? How do you load balance? How do you, uh, perform soft handoff. So these are terms, these are terms, these are the applications jo which gives a bigger umbrella and that umbrella is called fogging. 
so these are terms you can come across when uh, reading papers or different blogs. Now with the advent of fog or with the uh, implementation of the fog computing, you can go for applications like real-time health analysis, intelligent power efficient system in pa uh, smart power grids. Then we have real-time rail monitoring, pipeline optimization. So these are applications. But if you go to the background, like if we go for the uh, for the actual technologies that are working. So these are basically real-time monitoring. It supports with fog computing, you can go for real-time monitoring, any application, it can be anything, be it in the power grid, be it in the health sector, be it traffic, be it industries, industry 4.0, anything. For real-time monitoring, we can rely on fog computing. Then we have reduced network latency. I have already covered this. Close proximity, which is again, a different term for not letting the data go global. You have got inform information, valuable information, so you do not let it go global or pass through hops of networks. So we have close proximity of data, reduced operational costs, and um, as I said, multiple more. The researchers are coming up with new advantages every day. So uh, as you go for different applications, as you go for different uh, development of different uh, applications, even you will come across multiple advantages that is not mentioned in this presentation today. Now, these are some of the challenges that researchers try to uh, address while, uh, uh, while formulating their papers or designing their papers. So these are power consumption levels, like how much power is required for uh, performing operations, how much power are you saving, how much more power can you save. Then there is data security, like even if the data is not traveling far. There is always the threat of malicious activities by um, malicious users. So fog computing also needs uh, some additional data security. Then reliability, like how reliable is the data? How, uh, how much the data has been changed? What is the integrity of the data? So those things, again, this falls to, this falls for uh, under data security. Then there is the need for fault tolerance, like, uh, again, fog nodes can be misbehaving, fog nodes can uh, stop uh, its uh, operations. So there is a need for fault tolerance routines, then the real time analysis. Uh, and then again, there is the need for new architectures always. So these are some of the challenges. Is that if anyone is interested in working in fog computing, this is, these are some of the uh, these are some of the domains that you can start working on. Now, this is something a bit off topic, which I wanted to cover. So this is an upcoming 5G technology now. So researchers are already far ahead, far ahead in this and uh, industries like Qualcomm, then uh, 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 Cisco, then other companies, they have already started implementing uh, 5G technology into their industries and also for the users. I mean, for normal customers. So up the 5G technology is basically uh, an increased, uh, uh, an increased uh, uh, data speed. So this is like the, as we go up from generation to generation, like 3G to 4G to 5G, we are like, we are going for increased data rates. So for increasing the data rates, so these are the five basic building blocks of 5G technology. So one is the millimeter wave, uh, then small cells, massive MIMO. MIMO is massive input, massive output. Then uh, beam forming, full duplex. So let us dive into them a little bit. I'll just cover overviews, uh, nothing complicated. So millimeter waves is basically as we go to higher frequency ranges, if you are aware of uh, the frequency spectrum, so uh, in the in the uh, uh, 4G that we are using, we are currently working in 2.4 gigahertz. When we go to 5G, we go for a higher range of uh, this uh, frequency spectrum. So as we increase our frequency, the wavelength decreases. So as the wavelength decreases, what we have is narrow, narrow wavelengths. With narrow wavelengths, what happens is the interference due to the gases, rain, molecular absorption, humidity, so these increases. So there is a vulnerability against it. And, uh, and another thing is the limited range of uh, 
the limited range of these signals like these are limited to only a few kilometers these cannot go afar so uh, just an example like if a tower is present in front of us and uh, we are getting data at maybe gbps of uh, gbps of data which is the desired speed of the 5g technology if we move a bit far away the speed reduces if we if a building comes in between or a tree comes in between the uh, we lose network connectivity with the 5g tower so these are the challenges which uh, which basically exist in case of the 5g technology or basically high frequency ranges so as we go into uh, gigahertz to terahertz kind of frequency ranges the wavelength and the transmission uh, distance also gets limited these gets limited next we have the small cell small cell is basically coming from the millimeter waves itself because in case of millimeter waves uh, as i mentioned earlier we have got less amount of transmission range so the distance is very low so uh, with the 5g towers we create small cells these give us there are advantages also, advantages of it so it gives us reliable coverage it gives us spectral efficiency by spectral efficiency it, uh, I, uh, what i mean to say is in one small cell we can use suppose i'm using uh, the range of uh, suppose 3 gig gigahertz so if i'm using a 3 gigahertz channel someone else cannot use it suppose i'm using uh, tdma or fdma kind of thing someone cannot use it so in a, in a separate small cell he can use the same frequency range so we can use we can reuse our frequency when these are divided into small cells so hence the point spectral efficiency following these we have got improved capacity with the increasing frequency ranges we can have increased frequency uh, divisions and we can have we can serve increased number of users which also increases the capacity so basically overall we are increasing the overall performance finally the high speed like which is the main motive behind uh, developing from one generation to another then we have massive mimo which is massive input and out massive output so with the increasing number of devices we have increasing number of requests then there is the diverse services like people are looking for different kinds of services my requirement may be different from yours and uh, uh, for massive mimo there is a need for efficient task scheduling as i mentioned here there is the chance of uh, bottlenecks again so hence we have we need to look for efficient task scheduling methods then uh, 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 the next point is a uh, advantage actually which is processing near the data generating devices and uh, there is the need for preventing bottlenecks again so again if you notice these points these are again analogous to fog computing so the main motive uh, behind explaining 5g is like these the 4g the sorry the fog computing paradigm is appropriate or is best now for uh, helping uh, or for uh, deploying 5g networks or 5g technologies next is a very 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 interesting topic which is beam forming beam forming is basically directional signal transmission as i mentioned earlier in as the frequencies increases in case we have a we have got uh, buildings or trees coming in between the signal that that is we do not have line of sight transmission then uh, we do not receive signals anymore there is, there is distortion so to deal with this we have got beam forming which gives you a directional transmission you can select a direction where you want to transmit the data you basically first predict where the user can be at the next time instant and accordingly send the data so this is the basic concept of beam forming so the advantage of it is it enhances it enhances the line of sight transmission it helps in avoiding blockage due to building sentries uh, this is faster it is very fast and it is reliable so now uh, with millimeter waves and with small cells and with massive mimo beam forming has a major role to play in uh, uh, in uh, sending of the data to the uh, users and then there is full duplex by full duplex it is basically a max scheme basically a multiple access control scheme and it can be applied for tdma fdma cdma anywhere uh, but uh, what full duplex is uh, kind of saying is what happens in these technologies like tdma fdma and cdma you are dividing the frequency or the channels like suppose one channel is dedicated for only uplink and the other channel is for downlink is it that, that is why so we have got different rates in uplink and sorry upload and download rates so these vary 
but with full duplex, what the researchers are trying to do is in the same channel, within the same channel, there is going to be to and fro information simultaneously, transmission of to and fro signals simultaneously. So uh, within a single channel, we are trying to, like the researchers are trying to achieve two way communications in the same channel, which is further going to increase the capacity and it is further going to increase the spectral efficiency. Uh, the reasons are quite intuitive because if you, if we, if we no longer need to divide the channel for uplink and downlink, if we are using the entire channel for both the operations, then you, we have got a uh, increased spectral efficiency, increased spectral usage. So uh, let us conclude our presentation here. What we have covered is uh, that the fog computing reduces the load from the cloud. Again, very, very important. I'm trying to repeat this point again and again, that the fog is not here to replace the cloud. It is here to complement the cloud. Uh, it, uh, the fog computing brings uh, the processing closer to the users or the sensor devices, sensor nodes. It helps in increasing the uh, security. There is real-time analysis and monitoring, support for real-time analysis and supporting, then uh, complements the services of the cloud. I have repeated this again and again. Then. Uh, it is perfect for upcoming technologies. So upcoming technologies like 5G, 4G, uh, 6G, 7G, as the, we are approaching small cells. So this is perfect for uh, the upcoming technologies. So with this, I would like to conclude my uh, presentation on introduction to fog computing. Uh, uh, feel free to ask any kind of questions. And uh, yeah, that is it. Thank you so much. And again, I thank uh, Jorhat Engineering College and uh, uh, Iptisamda for giving me this wonderful opportunity. Uh, thank you so much. Be safe. All the best.